Hey, everybody. We are back and live again with my friend, Megan Tolan. Hey, Megan, how are you? I'm doing really well today, Mark. How are you? Good. Megan is pulling double duty while she has a toddler somewhere in the house, hopefully not screaming, uh, talking to us today a little bit about rubrics. So feel free, as always, drop your comments in the field and we'll we'll take them as we go along. Megan, take it away. Awesome. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to talk a little bit about rubrics today, cover the basics. Um, there are some higher level skills. We probably won't get into that, but I'm happy to help you outside of this little live stream. Um, so what you're seeing now is a course that doesn't have any real students in it. So we're not going to look at any real student data today, but it's an assignment that I've already built. So I wanted to show you the assignment itself is actually built and designed for the students. I've already got all the directions in there. And you'll notice I'm not in the edit screen of the assignment. So I have to be in the actual assignment build or outside of the build. And then I scroll all the way to the bottom and that's where I create my rubrics from. There's multiple ways to do this. This is just as the teacher, I'm thinking, okay, I've built my directions. I have my rubric, I'm ready to go. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna create it here. So I'm gonna hit this edit button or add rubric button and I'm gonna give it some title, a title. Um, and we're gonna call this design skills rubric. I can start building. Um, so, so let me go back here. These are my criteria and I can change the points. But first I just wanna give it a label. So the first thing I'm gonna say is, uh, we'll do design components. I'm just making this up on the fly here. Um, if you have a rubric already created, my favorite thing to do is to go side by side with my screens and copy and paste. Um, but for this assignment, I don't have one. So I'm gonna say the design components of this assignment are gonna be worth 10 points. And one of the things I love about the rubric tool is it's kind of smart. So it's gonna automatically adjust my full marks to 10 and my no marks to zero. And then I can add as many little components as I want. So I'm gonna say marks. I can give a, a bigger description here, which we'll get to in a second. I do three. Hmm, we'll say needs improvement. Okay, and I can and create all these across the 10. So when again, when I'm creating this criteria, I can put long descriptions in here if I would like. Um, this gives students just a little bit more information of what you're looking on, looking for. Um, same thing here, you traditional rubrics, all of these can be edited and you put in all these descriptions. Expectations. You can see what that looks like. Now, this is awesome because it didn't used to do this. And so as someone who used rubrics a long time ago and as rubrics have been getting better in Canvas, um, now you can actually hit this add criterion button. And what it'll say is, do you wanna duplicate the criterion you just created, or do you want to make a new one? So I'm going to do both for you, but we're going to start with the duplicate. So I can say, okay, the next area is also going to be worth 10 points, or I also want the same ratings across. So if I duplicate this, oh, let's, what are we going to assess them on? Required components. They have everything they need. You'll notice that all of this just duplicated down on the second line, which is very, very, very helpful. Um, if you want to adjust the point level, but leave the criteria the same or the little indicators, you can do that. And you'll see Canvas tries to assume what you would want here. You can go in and override that. I can make another one. It says, don't have any creative ideas at this point and I can still make this one worth five points um, and I could do a different scale if I wanted to. So it does take a little bit of time to go through and add everything. I will say as much as I love the rubric builder, I usually do build them outside of Canvas and I have a Google Doc or a Word Doc or some type of uh, rubric somewhere else that I then copy and paste in. It's just easier for me as far as keeping things consistent. Um, but once you've created this rubric in Canvas, you can use it over and over and over again, which is so awesome. And you can even share rubrics between teachers, which we'll talk about here in a second. 
Okay, so total, this is 23 points. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to create the rubric. All right, and here's what it looks like. Good. I'm gonna come back in because I like to save things, I get nervous. Um, I'm gonna edit and I'm gonna come back down and you'll see you have lots of options here. If you check this box, it says all right, freeform comments, you'll notice that all of those ratings go away and you have the ability as a teacher in the speed grader to just add comments in there, which is really nice um, if you wanna do that. If you don't, I'll uncheck it. Um, you can remove the points from the rubric. I'm all about just, give, I'd rather give feedback than give a grade. So this is something that is awesome for me. I can give them specific feedback on what they did well and what they didn't do well. And I don't have to actually attach a number to it if I don't want to. You can, we're gonna get to outcomes in a second. You can use this rubric for assignment grading. This is the box that's critical to check because if you don't check this box, it won't total it for you. Um, and so I'm gonna check this guy and then I'm gonna hit update rubric. And you'll notice Canvas is yelling at me. It's like, hey, there's a hold up here. So when I originally created the assignment, you'll see I said it was worth 20 points. And now I'm coming in and saying, hey, use this rubric to grade. And I made my rubric out of 23 points. And it's telling me that a student is, could get 114%. So it's like, do you want to leave that or do you want to make that change? So I'm going to go ahead and say I want to change it. Be really nice of you to leave it, though, and give students higher grades than what you said. So now that I've got my rubric, I can go into SpeedGrader and assess on this rubric. Oh, I don't have any students, so let me grab an assignment really quick. I'm gonna go into student view. Let's see here. So just stay with me here. I'm so sorry. All right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave that for right now. We'll come back. I'll have to pick a different assignment that I've already created a rubric with. Because once I'm in the screen grade, speed grader, you can just click the rubric. And what you'll want to do if you haven't used the speed grader, we actually have a video um, already on that. We went live uh, last week or two weeks ago, and there's a video on the speed grader and rubrics are in there too. So. Let's go back down to this assignment. I'm gonna show a couple more things when it comes to the rubric. So I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna hit edit. You can see these options say find outcomes. If you have outcomes in your course, and there's a couple way to get them, sometimes your institution will push out uh, outcomes. If you're in a K-12 school, some schools will pull in all of their state standards um, for the different content areas. Um, you can find outcomes. So I have a couple generic ones in here that really don't mean anything. But if you want to assess on these outcomes using a rubric, you can grab the outcome and import it into your rubric. We Canvas has an entire learning mastery grade book and has all the outcomes and you could grade like standards based grading essentially. And you can use that feature. It's a little bit higher than where we're going today. Um, and I'm happy to share what I know if you want to connect with me outside of this live webinar. But even if you want to assess um, on the outcome and the rubric itself, you can do that. So you can add outcomes to your rubric. Even if all you're doing here as a teacher is tracking which outcomes you're assessing, you can do that as well. So that's really helpful. All right. What I also can do oops, is I can find a rubric. So if one of the nice things here is that I can see make this a little bit bigger. I can see all of my rubrics in all of my courses. So if I wanna grab a rubric that I use in one course and bring it over and make a copy so I'm not duplicating work, I can do that. If you teach multiple sections but choose to keep those sections separate, you can do that as well. So I can choose a different rubric and say, use this rubric. Right. And now I have a different rubric here. So again, once you make a rubric, this is the biggest piece for me. Once you make it, you can use it as many times as you would like, and you can even pull it in and just make some changes. It'll create a new rubric for you. You're just going to want to change the name because um, you can't have two rubrics with the exact same name. Uh, super, super helpful. I've seen teachers create like a five plus one writing traits rubric, and then you can use it over and over again. 
when I was teaching um, in K-12, I would have like a five point assignment and I would create a five point rubric, a seven point rubric and a 10 point rubric. And I could just reuse those as many times as I needed throughout the semester. And it really, really did help with my grading. Let's see. I haven't seen any questions pop up. If anyone is here and watching and wants to chime in some tips, we'll take those too. Um, right now, you can access rubrics a couple different places. Again, I do it in assignments most of the time. That's my workflow. That's just kind of how I'm going when I design. Um, but you can access them out of outcomes, although this is going to be changing soon. So if you go to outcomes right now, if you're going to go look at this and work on this today, it'll be outcomes, manage rubrics. Okay. So you can see all of your rubrics here and you can actually add and create rubrics from this view. But that is going to change. Um, let's see. And I, I will, we'll get those release notes. That's gonna change here in April. And you're actually gonna see rubrics in your left navigation as a teacher um, moving forward. So that's a, that's a change that is coming if those of you who are, who are rubric experts and you're gonna be like, oh, that's exciting new news. When you're doing discussions, rubrics are in a little bit of a different spot. So I'm gonna go um, grab a discussion here. Okay. And Instead of being at the bottom of my assignment, if I want to do a graded discussion, my rubrics actually live under the hot dog, right? These three little dots. I'm going to click on it and I can see, oops, hold please. I have to make this a graded discussion first. So if I want my discussion to be graded, we'll say it's like 10 points. I can come up here. And now I get my add rubric button. So it has to be a graded discussion. And then you can add the rubric from this screen. And this will allow you to use rubrics on student discussion forums. Again, you get the same features you did in the assignment. You can find one. I can say I want to do this hyperdoc rubric and use this guy. And then I could even just make changes from here should I want to. You will want to come in and again, check that box. This is the key. I think this is the thing most people forget is that we want to use this rubric for assignment grading. Update rubric. We'll go ahead and change that one. Okay. So now I'm going to jump into SpeedGrader since I have something to grade. And you can see what that rubric looks like in SpeedGrader. So this is my student submission. I'm going to pull this over and I can click on view rubric and I can choose to click on my boxes. Um, if you are, I, I use the rubrics a lot. Um, and even for things that are non-traditional assignments that wouldn't normally use a rubric for, um, I like to do this when I'm grading on the mobile app and it's super helpful to have the rubric just to touch and go, but you can even come in and leave this comment where I can say, and it's going to attach to that one section of the rubric, which is very helpful. Oops. As opposed to putting it down here in the overall comments. That checkbox that we checked that says use assignment, use for assignment grading is going to tally this all up once I hit save and drop the score into the assignment grading box or give that student a grade. If you don't check that box, you'll do all this clicking on the rubric and then it won't tally it. And you're like, oh, you have to do the math yourself. So that box is key in actually grading. And of course you could just go to the next student if there were one. So Mark, do we have any questions that you've seen? No questions yet. I know that Eddie was mentioning for all of you Indiana people out there, um, he's built some outcomes that you can that you can use if needed. Oh, awesome. I The outcomes in, in the Learning Mastery Gradebook is a really, really powerful tool. Uh, I like to do it just to assess, like just to track myself um, because my institution doesn't use standards-based grading. But um, if you have those, and thank you, Eddie, it's so helpful. And you can pull them in at an institution level instead of every teacher having to manually put them in, which is, which is nice. That's pretty much the basics of rubrics. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out on Twitter or Facebook or wherever you're watching this. Um, we're happy to help. And of course, you can always check the Canvas guides. And I know Chris had asked a question here about the the change. Just so everybody knows, um, rubrics that are going to be moving to the course navigation for teachers no longer in the outcomes tab. 
Uh, this has been pushed out into beta and will be live on the 18th of, of April. So you can look forward to that. Terry, our friend, is saying she loves using rubrics with group presentations, can hide the assignments, take notes while they present. Oh, Any that's super nice. I do that too. I actually was doing that uh, between, I had class earlier today and I was doing that. I had uh, the assignments, I still say muted. I had the assignments hidden and I was grading while they were, were presenting and it was very helpful. So great idea. As far as Chris, your question, um, we'll drop the link to the new release notes in there. I didn't get a chance to dig into them too much, but right now it just looks like where they're going to be located as far as I can see. Yep. Anything else, Megan, any other tips or tricks or things you want to make sure people know? Um, I think it's just really important to like, I get stuck as a teacher thinking of rubrics for labs and big projects, but to be a little creative and think non-traditional, it just really helps with the grading process in an online class. So thinking outside of the traditional rubric box would be my best tip. Megan, can you give us any examples of, of how you've done that before? So give us some examples of how you've thought outside the box and used rubrics in a way that most people wouldn't think to do it. Oh, well, yeah, I think most of it is just those quick assignments. Like if I have, like I teach science. So if I had five, I, mean, I can do, create one here. Um, let's go add a rubric. And we're going to delete this guy. Um, so I, I'll just call this five-point rubric. And then this becomes number one. And I mean, if I want to give partial credit, I can. And number two. So then as if it's like a problem that has a static answer that I can just mark right or wrong. Um, then I'll just be able to click as opposed to having to type on the doc or annotate over it. This is just a faster way for me to get feedback. I can still annotate or type if I want to, um, but this just goes a little bit quicker for me. Um, so that's kind of my space there. And then I love the idea of taking the points off. Um, I think that is a little bit challenge. Um, yes. And yes, thank you, Terry. We do, you can switch, um, share rubrics between classes. Um, I've even seen teachers, you can create an empty assignment. So if all you're trying to do is right now, you, there's not an easy way to share a rubric necessarily. If I'm trying to just import content over, um, you can create an empty assignment and the rubric will attach that assignment. So if you're sharing something in commons, um, you have an empty assignment, you could just call it the name of the rubric, attach the rubric and the rubric will come as well. So that's helpful to know divide and conquer that work whenever we can. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Megan, for joining us. Thanks, everybody, for the great comments. We will be back again tomorrow talking about some other stuff. So we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys.